blue check liberal Twitter is absolutely losing their minds yet again over Susan Sarandon because she stood up for Twitter user Ryan Knight, who's been getting just a wave of vitriol and hate from those same blue check neoliberal Twitter hacks. If you don't recall, back in 2015, 2016, Susan Sarandon became the boogie woman of Clinton supporters, of corporate neoliberal Democrats, and they blamed her, maybe more than anyone except for Bernie himself, for why they lost. Of course, they would never blame themselves. They would never blame Hillary. They would never blame the awful policies they ran on. It was all the fact that a few high-profile people didn't endorse Hillary, or if they did endorse her, they didn't endorse her hard. Enough. And Susan Sarandon, as somebody who supported Bernie but then didn't go over the Clinton, became the epitome of like the quote unquote privileged, uh, you know, Bernie or bust supporter. And that even years after they blamed her. And right now they're focusing that same hate on someone named Ryan Knight. You might not have heard of him because unlike Susan Sarandon, he's not a big Hollywood celebrity. He's a prominent Twitter user with a few hundred thousand followers. You know, he's a, he's a known guy, but not a well-known guy beyond Twitter. And he's gotten famous because he used to be a Warren supporter and somebody that was recognized as a fairly traditional Democrat, like on the progressive wing, but certainly not a leftist that was, you know, beyond the Democratic Party. But over the past few months in particular, he's grown more and more disillusioned with Biden's leadership of the Democratic Party and with the party's, you know, insistence that they reject the will of actual Democrats. That Ryan Knight is one of these people that says, why would I support a party that sees 90% of its members support Medicare for all and then basically spit on those members? And he has said he's not voting for Joe Biden. Now, I have to be clear that Susan Sarandon is in hot water this time for standing up for this guy for the hate he's getting, even though she's voting for Joe Biden. They're getting what they wanted from Susan Sarandon all along. Unlike in 2016, this time she's saying, I don't like him, but I'm going to vote for him. That's what they wanted back in 2016, at least hypothetically, and they're still going at her. Here's what she said on Twitter, because I want to read this out to you so you get a sense for just how mild what she said, you know, it was. And she says here, standing by at Proud Socialist, that's Ryan Knight's Twitter handle, and respect his courage in sharing his journey over the past few years. We need more Ryan Knights to stand up and speak truth to power every single day. She goes on to say, in response to one of these neoliberal Twitter people actually being decent and saying, hey, maybe we're being counterproductive and attacking these folks. She says, thank you. You're right. The energy used to shame people should be put into phone banking and whatever else will build enthusiasm for Biden's presidency. I will be voting for Biden. You know, she says as a vote against Trump as a vote against fascism. And like, that's the whole point. She goes on from there. But the point here is clear. She's voting for Biden. Other people like Cornell West are voting for Biden. They're not happy about it and they're not going to lie about it, but you're getting them to organize against Trump. And what she said there is crucial. You are going to only turn folks away when you respond to people that stick their necks up and say, hey, I'm not voting for Biden or hey, I'm not excited about voting for Biden. And what she said is also absolutely essential. Instead of wasting all your energy on literally some guy, and this is no disrespect to Ryan, we follow each other on Twitter, um, but he's just some random guy in the grand scheme of things, focusing all your attentions on him rather than make those calls for Biden, rather than donate that money for Biden, rather than put up lawn signs for Biden, rather than do all the little things that Biden needs to have done to win those close swing state elections. And you can also add that to all the other Democrats running for Congress and for Senate and all those close races, you know, volunteering for them, phone banking for them, canvassing for them, all those things. They're not doing it. At least they're not doing it enough because what we've seen is Biden supporters are getting absolutely bashed when it's compared to Trump in terms of lawn signs, in terms of phone banking. I've even seen things like, you know, when they are phone banking for Biden, when they are putting up signs for Biden, they're not putting up very many. You know, some of them are being asked, you know, uh, what do we say about policy? And they're being told to not talk about policy. 
that talking about policy is divisive. We just want to talk about Joe and, and, and what Joe means in his character, quote unquote. What this tells me is they are losing this election. They might still win it, but what they're doing is putting them on course to lose. And that if they win, it's only in spite of their efforts, not because of them. And I think that Susan Sarandon really hits the nail on the head. Back during the primary, one thing a lot of Bernie Sanders supporters said was that we have the base of people that will do whatever it takes to help Bernie win. Even Bill Maher, who wasn't a huge Bernie fan, said, you know, when it comes to enthusiasm, only Bernie can really match Trump among the Democratic candidates. And he said, these are the people that are really going to go, you know, full bore to get their guy elected. And I don't know if anybody else has that energy. And what we said is that we do. We'll, we'll make the phone calls. We'll put up the signs. We'll knock on the doors. We'll give that extra bit of money, even frankly, for a lot of working class people, when giving that money is an actual sacrifice rather than one less bottle of fancy wine. Like, you know, that, that Pete Buttigieg could put in the wine cave. You know what I mean? Like, we were there. And as soon as Bernie lost, what a lot of us started to say is some of us are voting for Biden. Some of us aren't. Some of us are Canadian like me. We can't vote. But like, you know, some of us are going to support Biden. Some of us won't. But it's your job to get him elected. Hit the phone banks. Get canvassing. Do all the things you need to do. Stop wasting time browbeating literally a few dozen prominent Bernie supporters on Twitter to vote your way and go get the dozens of millions of young working class, black, Latino, other marginalized people that likely didn't vote in 2016. And maybe talk to Joe Biden about how he's not drawing enthusiasm because he's running on milquetoast neoliberalism. Stop wasting time on us and get to work. You wanted to do this without the Bernie Sanders movement. You thought you could do it based on corporate neoliberal media hackery. Maybe you can. I hope you do. Because frankly, Biden's better than Trump. But you have to go out and do the work. Leave Susan Sarandon alone. Leave Ryan Knight alone and actually do something positive for once.